Hello, I'm Sandra Pollock. Thank you so much for joining me. It's great to uh, be back again with you in this series of tips to help us get through our second lockdown here in the UK. Now, before I go on, can I ask you to um, click the like button and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. So by doing that, you do two things. One, uh, that like button helps this to be shared with people that might not ordinarily see it and they get to benefit from uh, from these sessions as well. And secondly, by subscribing, then you get first uh, dibs on the information that I share out with you. So thank you in advance for doing both of those things. So uh, I have been sharing um, before, if you've missed them, there are a couple of other um, short, sweet videos uh, on little tips to help us take control of our lives and to, um, to get through this lockdown in a more positive and less stressful way. So today, I want to focus a little bit on leadership because I know many of my clients um, sort of check out these videos and we've been talking a lot about leadership, not only here in the UK, but across the globe as well. So when we think about leadership, usually we think about really grandiose ideas about what it is to be a leader. But, you know, there are skills in leadership that are not always big and not always shouted about, but are definitely important. And if we can grab hold of some of these smaller seen skills, then our leadership will actually grow and expand. And that's where I want to take us today. So in this section, I want to look at one of the or a few of the simplest ways to demonstrate your leadership through this lockdown period. Now, if we're looking at um, roles from supervisor to team leader, to a manager, to director uh, and beyond, then we would know that all of our employees are looking to the individuals in these roles for leadership and direction. This lockdown situation is relatively new to all of us across the world, but everybody's eyes are on the leader. Their eyes are on you looking to uh, see how you behave, how you perform, and how you can take us all through this difficult period. So I want to touch on, as I said, some leadership skills that sometimes are ignored. So leadership skills that will help you and your team right now. Number one is listen. And you might think, okay, that's not new. But but answer me this. If we look across the world, how many of our leaders are seen as good listeners? But this listening is not just the everyday listening. This listening is about listening to understand. When we listen to try and understand where the other person's coming from, understand what their position is, understand how they got there, then we build a deeper understanding within ourselves. But we also, through listening to understand, build a deeper connection with the individual that we are there in that moment with. So listening to understand means that you're not listening to think, okay, how do I answer their question and move on? You're not listening to and thinking to yourself, gosh, this is boring. You are not listening with a whole heap of different conversations going on in your mind. You are listening with your full focus on that individual. So they have your full attention and you literally say to yourself, I want to understand. So that's what you're saying in your head. I want to understand where this person's coming from. I want to understand the depths of their concerns. I want us to understand how they got to where they are today. And I want to understand how I can help them to move forward. So listening to understand is a skill that if we can 
oh, if we can only gain, gain and gather the ability to listen in that way, we will find our connections with the people around us much deeper and much more enduring, but also much more satisfying both for them and to us. So we all want leaders that are interested in us. So if you're a leader, no matter whether you're a supervisor or you are a director or CEO, learn to listen, to understand, and that will help you to lead your people. Because leadership is about convincing other people not only about the path that you want them to follow, but that you believe in them as well as where you are wanting us all to go. So listen to understand, even though you have your own fears and your own concerns, listen to understand. Even though you may not have all the answers or know the, the, the right way forward, you can still listen to understand. And sometimes, the power is in that listening. Because I always say, if you're listening, then you're gathering more information. And when you have more information, that gives you a better position to make decisions to move forward. Sometimes we can't always see clearly from our perspective, but other people can. And we won't know that if we don't take time to listen and to listen to understand. So, you know, if you are worried deep within yourself that your team is expecting you to have all the answers, actually, your team are well aware that you don't have all the answers. or You may not um, know the way forward. At this time of pressure, yes, people want answers, but people want to know that you care about them. And what better way to show, to demonstrate that you do care is to listen to them and to understand. So a part of listening to understand is also in how we ensure that we're getting the right understanding from what we're hearing. And the other way is tip number two is to summarize what you think that they are saying. Obviously at the right time within that two-way conversation, but summarize what you've heard and summarize what you think you've understood. So you play that back to them in a way so that they can confirm and you can say, you know, do I, have I got this right? Am I understanding you clearly? This is what I, I perceive that you're saying, am I correct? So that also demonstrates to them that you are listening to try to understand. So it is a simple thing. It's a really, really simple thing. And sometimes it's so simple that people ignore it. But if you look at those people who you value, the one of the things that you probably value is the time and attention that they give to you. So listen to understand, summarize and question whether your understanding, your perception of what they're saying is correct. And uh, number three, be honest. If you don't have the answers, if you don't know the answers, if you are unsure, then say that. I don't think anybody will be surprised sometimes, but you can always say, I don't know, we're working on it, we will come back to you or I will come back to you when I do have an answer, you know. But, you know, I have the same questions that you do and we're working on trying to, to find solutions and, and to find ways forward. But in the meantime, we can work together and we can get through this together. So be honest as to where you are. You know, don't try to fudge it. People can always tell when that is what you're doing. But if you're honest, they will respect you as well because by you being honest with them, you are giving them respect and you're showing them respect. So that is point number three, be honest. Point number four, show concern. So hopefully by listening to understand, you are showing concern. But sometimes we misinterpret this whole concept of showing concern. Showing concern doesn't mean that you have to jump in the same boat of depression and frustration that they are. You listen to them, you hear what they're saying, you summarize, you share that you understand, but you don't have to jump with them into that boat of total despair. Because if you're in that boat with despair, and they're in that boat of despair, who's leading who out of the despair? So your job as a leader is to 
hold yourself back. Whatever your thoughts are, you may be just as concerned as they are, but if they're a member of your team and they are looking to you for leadership, then that it's not the place for you to be telling them how desperately um, uh, concerned you are. You're not lying. That's not about telling an untruth. I've already said, be honest, but it's about holding back where you are because this isn't the time or the place for that. And you are their leader, you know, so you want to be strong for them. And your goal is to find other avenues where you can offload your frustrations and your concerns, but your team are not the people to do that with. You are their leader, you have a leader, a manager, and that's where you go, or colleagues on the same, um, same line, you know, on the management, uh, levels as you are, other people that you can talk to, but not your team. So show concern, be concerned, be open, be caring, but don't jump in the boat of despair and frustration with them because that is not how and where you're showing leadership. You can feel for them, you can understand where they're coming from. But the objective here is for you to lead them into seeing a positive way forward. Lead them into seeing a positive tomorrow. Lead them into seeing that we are all working through this with all, with all its uncertainties, whatever the situation is that you're dealing with, we are all working through this together. So there are a couple of points, four points there for you to um, and to take in in terms of your leadership role and your leadership skills as we work our way through this lockdown. So um, people are looking to you for support, if nothing else, even if you don't have all the answers. But knowing that you are there for them, that you have time to listen and to hear and to understand and to support is one of the elements of leadership, which in some cases, in my opinion, is lacking in um, a lot of this day and time. Leadership is not only about having a vision to uh, pull people forward with you, but leadership is also being there in the nitty gritty and showing care, concern, and giving value to people in the everyday and at the times like now when they really need it. So I hope that that is helpful for you and will, you know, um, help you to see what you can do right now when everybody's thinking, oh my gosh, how do we get through this again? You have it within you to do these little simple things that may be small, but certainly have a big impact in terms of the experience people are having as they talk and share with you as their leader as they go through this together. If you need any help and support, then, you know, I do one to one coaching. I do group coaching as well, training and development. Get in touch you know, um, drop me a line. Uh, my um, my uh, yeah, email is coming up shortly, Sandra at sandrapollock.com and visit the website there as well. You can get more information and more tips like this to help you through this period. So there you go. That is it for today for this session. I will be coming back again and sharing some more tips. If you have a question, something that you would like me to address in these sessions, again, drop me a line, throw me a question. You can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, uh, Pinterest, probably almost everywhere. Um, but get in touch and uh, share your questions, your points with me, and uh, I'll be happy to help out. And if I can help you, don't forget, drop me a line. I'd be more than willing to help you as an individual and your business or company as well. This is Sandra Pollock signing out for now. Thank you again for joining me. Until next time.